Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Taylor Field, here from Geekverse Podcast. Happy Comic Con, because it's Comic Con weekend. Just gonna do a quick shout out, you know, check out our awesome stuff. We just did Comic Con for uh, the other day. We had a lot of news drop, you know. Um, gosh, there's just so much. Iron Fist, Marvel TV, DC streaming live app news. Uh, Annabelle 3, like there, there's so much, Predator, Star Wars, go check it out, and we got more coming out this weekend, so, uh, you know, check it out, and if you're listening to this uh, cast right now, and it's at a later date, go back and look at all our Comic Con stuff, it's a great time. Anyways, why I am here today, ladies and gentlemen, is to discuss Godzilla Part 2 on Netflix. Now, I for some reason was anticipating this was going to come out in 2019. And I just I happened to get an email, and it was like, Netflix, it's like, boom, Godzilla Part 2 coming out yesterday. Like, oh, yesterday? What a treat, you know? So I just had to sneak it in here, had to get out, got my steel case for the movie. It's nice, mmm, just good right there. So, yeah, let's, let's get down to business. So, Godzilla, this will be spoilers, so if you haven't seen this, you know, this is Part 2, go check it out. And make sure while you're on top of that, go check out, I did a review for the first part, fantastic review, I, I mean it was a great time, great great, good laugh, so um, check it out, but uh, just to start off non-spoilers, you know, I think this was a great, uh, great follow-up, you know, I love that it obviously continues right after the part one, and it, it has a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting aspects that it tackles in regards to what you're willing to sacrifice to really destroy something and <laughs> that actually doesn't sound really positive <laughs> but I, I I mean in the sense like what are you willing to compromise to go to certain lengths in your life and you know are you willing to give up your humanity to overcome challenges in your life and I think those are things that, you know, many people, I mean, hopefully it's not something that you want to actually have to experience because if you have to, you know, compromise your humanity, then I, I, I'm not really sure what you're up to, but you know, may, hopefully it's not questionable or anything like that, but it's, it just, it, this show goes to prove the point where as a human, human beings shouldn't have to compromise their humanity to achieve amazing and incredible things in this life. And I think the show really delivers that and explains that. And uh, overall, it was just, uh, it did have some moments that were a little bit long and I just, I never I never found myself grabbing my phone uh, using that as, a, as a, an explanation point, but I, I was totally uh, mesmerized by the whole, the whole film, or the whole part, I should say, and it had my attention throughout the whole experience. Um, they dived into a lot of, uh, you know, Godzilla and that sort of stuff. And, you know, I'm not totally well versed in Toho Monsters. Um, I do enjoy the movies. I do love playing the video games. I think anything Godzilla is good. You know, he, he's fantastic. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to move right into spoiler territory. So like I said, if you haven't checked out part two, pause this, go check it out, and then come back. If you haven't checked out part one, you shouldn't be listening to this. You can if you want, this is being a good time, but I highly recommend going back, check out part one, check out the review, check out part two, check out this review, but you do what you want. So anyway, so we're gonna dive right in here. So yeah, it continues right after the first part, and literally right away, you know, <sighs> I had to go back and watch the ending of part one, actually, just to kind of, well, re uh, reverse myself, not reverse, um, <laughs> re-educate myself in the events that happened. So, obviously, you know, they kill Godzilla Mini, and then, boom, or OG Godzilla just pops out from the mountain, and it's like, wow, what they did was for nothing, but you know, it kind of did something. Here's the original Godzilla, and he's pissed. He swips, uh, swipes his tail, boom, there goes everything. They're literally everything. Boom. So that's, you know, that's definitely a bit of a rain on their parade, but imagine the rain is actually rocks from a mountain. And so now, you know, you got Harua, Her Her uh, I can't pronounce his name very well, but he's, uh, you know, he's been rescued and it turns out there's humans on earth. Um, and they were, they I guess they've captured all of the uh, the remaining survivors from the Godzilla attack, and they locked them up, 
and the uh, the two ladies now my knowledge with Godzilla I'm s I apologize I as far as lore goes I uh, I, I I'm a little a little uh, uneducated uh, I'll put that out there but you know from what I remember I'm pr I'm very confident that this has their culture and these humans are and the two ladies that looked alike they are all about Mothra I'm very sure and that's what they're talking about with like the egg and all that stuff and it's just I, I I, I'm tapping into some old school lore here. I'm, I'm very sure, you know, if I'm wrong, correct me. Comment below. Let me know. You know, let all the fans know in the comments. You know what this is. But I, I from my point of view, um, I'm very certain that it's Mothra related, which is cool. You know, if it is, you know, then I pat myself on the chest. Um, but and moving on, you know, it was very cool to see. Like, okay, there's some civilizations still kicking around on Earth. Um, I liked seeing, you know, humanity being swooped right back to square one. I like seeing that. That was something that did justice in part one was that they had, they gave it their all and they brought everything that they could afford to expend to take down this mini Godzilla and it was all just a waste. So it was cool to see humanity reset back to square one at this point and this, the, you have the uh, the people up on the ship orbiting uh, Earth and it's funny because they're... Uh, they don't know, they know Godzilla OG just popped off here, and they know that their human uh, survivors are just nowhere to be found, so they spend 48 hours looking, but then they figure out that OG Godzilla can shoot them out from uh, the ground. His range will, um, from his uh, attack, his breath, will actually pierce them in space. It's like, holy shit, this Godzilla don't mess around. So, they're panicking, they want to leave, but then, you know, Harua, he uh, gets rescued and he gets healed up a little bit and he goes off and gets kidnapped and he does find some more survivors but yeah, he gets kidnapped but then you learn about okay here's the egg people and they talk about like okay their history on the earth maybe they're a descendant from humanity or a degeneration from humanity um the guy uh, Galuga not Galaga but uh, I must be saying his name wrong Galuga one of the those uh, big buff dudes he uh, he seemed to frown upon them, and you know they have a certain way about them, a certain belief, and a certain standing to them as in their race. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, right away getting to see all the familiar characters like Metphis, Yuko, Metphis. He's he he is a wild guy. Like let me tell you. So <laughs> once the uh, these two uh, Mothra ladies decide to help out. Uh, Harua and them kind of move out and get that signal up to their uh, orbiting station to their other human colony up there orbiting the earth um, they get attacked by these uh, <sighs> well I guess before we get to that part when they get into their first real like this fight sequence with these other like dragon birds you do learn that most of the planet has kind of succumbed to Godzilla and accepted Godzilla as the ultimate being and the planet has reformed itself to suit Godzilla and essentially the animals and the plant life on this planet now on earth have learned to over the 20,000 year lifespan they have kind of mimicked what the most powerful entity on the planet is so that it allows them to survive so yes they do share a many many similar traits to Godzilla they aren't necessarily Godzilla themselves, but more or less an extension in the fact that they do mimic uh, to survive. And I think that's a very cool explanation, and I think, I, I, I'm not really sure much about nature and that sort of stuff, but you know, I feel like a lot of things out there, like parasites and viruses, they will mimic their hosts. Like, even like, oh, well, Spider-Man for example, you know, you have a symbiote. I think, you know, it'll mimic its host to survive, and it uses its the the host because the host is what gives it its life and its strength it uses that to stay alive and become more powerful in the setting and if it loses that host or that originally very powerful um uh entity it can't it either can't thrive on its own or it'll look to mimic off of something else so i guess actually a symbiote would be a very a good example at least how i would interpret it as most of the creatures in this uh, in this film in this part on Earth, so yeah, so that's what basically happens. The fight scene 
uh, follows with them fighting these dragon things, and Metfist, again, he's just some sly, sneaky dude, you know, he just, he was gone for so long, and then, boom, he's here with some human tech, and he blasts these things down, they're like, what's going on? It's Metfist! And he just comes in, he's just, he's just, he's just so casual, he sticks to his roots, and he knows what's what, you know, it's fantastic, so, that's what he does, he just comes in, he saves the day, and, uh, so they continue on, and eventually, I was really hoping for Mecha Godzilla to make an appearance in this, and you know, granted, they built him twenty thousand years ago, so obviously, you know, it's kind of uh, um, obviously it's, the odds aren't in the favor of seeing him. I would have loved to have seen it though, but it makes sense that the Mecha Godzilla they find would have been built to deal with Godzilla twenty thousand years ago, and not this evolved version of him. So he would have been definitely ancient tech but i i did this is the part where it kind of dipped for me where mecha godzilla city <laughs> i i don't know if that is actually in relation to anything in past lore or anything like that but it was just a little wild i'm like okay if, like i'm putting my my shoes in the shoes of an anime person here this is a little this is getting a little intense but uh i'll roll with it i'll see where it goes and you know nanomites and all that stuff like okay yeah let's do it let's get nanonized and I think uh, it, it got a little freaky deaky when they started like volunteering themselves to be like joining in with the nanites. But then this is where it actually started to tackle the whole idea of what would you compromise, what would you be willing to give up to overcome something. And Harwa just the whole time. That's why he got so got along so good with Galaga and those people because he just they shared the common uh, belief that they have to arise above of what they are and step out of what they what they like actually what they are as humans as as a, a civilization as a people become something completely different and give themselves into something like the nanomites and do that so they can defeat this enemy you know like he's like Galaga says you know monsters are called monsters because you can't defeat them as you know human you have to become something else entirely and that was a very tough call for Howard, but we'll get to that as the uh, near the end of this. So, you know, they uh, they get there, and I just I feel like this <sighs> Mecha Godzilla City was just I don't want to say a cop out, but I feel like it was just an easy way to write in. You know, humanity just done fudged. They 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 took out mini Godzilla, and now big Godzilla is here, and they got nothing left. They got no tech. So we're just going to give them a whole city that was just building itself. And you're going to get access to all this tech. It'll just start building stuff on its own. Like, oh, you want, you know, let's just, if for example, let's say here, we're going to give you nanomites that will be coming out of a massive 3D printer and you can do whatever you want. And I feel like, you know, what really pulled me into part one was the fact that they didn't have much to spare and they had to resort to hard strategizing and planning to take out Godzilla and this time they piggybacked off of the initial strategy on how they kill Godzilla in the first film, the first part, and they applied that this time only, you know, they were just given the tech right for free and I, I didn't like that. I wish they could have. I feel like it could have been written in a little bit better. But that being said, I accepted it. Moved along. You know, it was entertaining. Um, I thought uh, it, it was funny how Godzilla was just kind of chilling around, going around his path, you know. And I guess he was searching for Mecha Godzilla City. I, I wish there was a bit more Godzilla happening. There was just a lot of talking and dialogue and planning in this Mecha Godzilla City uh, sequence. Would have liked to see a bit more Godzilla, but the scenes, excuse me, the scenes that they show of Godzilla, oh my god, visually, oh, 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 if I could do a Godzilla roar right now, I would roar for that, because it is fan-freaking-tastic. I mean, it is visually beautiful, and he's just, even though he's, like, not even moving in his scenes, his scene will just be an eye moving to the side, but it's like, the background is, is uh, solid, or stationed, and he's just like swerving to the side a little bit. It shows that he's moving, but uh, it's just, he looks so cool. When he roars, it's just great. He just, you feel like, that is Godzilla. That is, that is a great Godzilla variation thrown in the anime here. So, 
I loved how they did Godzilla, and the animation of the characters too in the fight scenes I think is fantastic. I think it was very well done. It was just all in all, I loved the visuals and the atmosphere that this part just delivers. You know, it felt very much like part one with a whole slap of something fresh. Um, but yeah, moving along, you know, they, uh, they incorporate the nanites, the nanomites, and they start to, you know, touch more upon the fact that the nanomites maybe aren't, they have a mind of their own, you know, it's very logical and technical, but it's not something that humanity can really control. Yes, that these nanomites, uh, they exist and they're spreading over the planet, and they can be used to wipe out Godzilla, but then once Godzilla is gone, Godzilla is the only thing that seems to keep it at bay. And once Godzilla is removed from that, then it's replacing a monster with a monster. And, you know, sometimes when you're trying to destroy something, as an end result in your last stand, you know, you can create monsters in that sense. And, you know, again, this part touches upon that. And uh, that's where, you know, you see some uh, dialogue and some difference between point of view between the characters and especially Harua as he's pulled between you know the belief of Galuga and Metphis he's just trying to find the middle ground and I I like Metphis a lot more in this I felt he was shady and just I don't know I just I couldn't get a good read on him in the first part but in this one I really liked him simply because he just always came with a solution he was just right there and you know he's like he's like your best friend you know it's like I don't know from personal experience, but like if you were to go out to a club or a bar or something and you get smashed and you don't know what's going on and all of a sudden Godzilla just pops in, you're like, holy fudge! But all of a sudden, Metphis is there and he just puts uh, his arm around you and you guys just stroll down the road and everything's fine. That's what I feel like he is. He's just a very solid, casual, composed person. He doesn't get frustrated by anything. Um, but uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's a great character. And I really liked how his relationship grew with Harua. It felt a lot more, uh, a lot more deep, deeper than their relationship in the first part. Um, Galaga and his people, they definitely, it was cool to see a lot more development with them and see how committed they were to trying to destroy Godzilla and how voluntarily sacrificing themselves for this greater good, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to touch upon like their religion too much or anything like that, but just how their blind faith, it was very powerful, but it was very dangerous. And in the end, it was ultimately the result of their own destruction, I should say. Um, but that being said, they, they had a certain idea in mind. They had that goal and I don't want to say they were willing to compromise themselves and who they were, but they were willing to dismiss what they were to become something bigger than themselves. Th what they wanted to become bigger than themselves is up to a point of view, whether or not it is good or bad. To them it was good, to Harua and Metphis it was bad. They, it, they believed in, you know, always staying true to themselves. And prioritizing that, and I, I again, like I really like that message that they sent out in this, uh, in this part, and leading up to uh, the final fight sequence when they got uh, big OG Zilla marching in on them. They, um, they, they had a few little snags in their tech. Godzilla primes up his shot and fires on their base. Obviously, it's fine. They got the shields up because this base is just infinite free resource you know, for the taking, <laughs> and, um, you know, moving in from that, they just, they set up the same trap that they set up for the mini Godzilla, OG Godzilla's strolling in, and, you know, this time, though, they weren't using those air speeders, uh, the pod racing, this time they were using vultures, and these things, you know, I, I, I'm gonna throw it out there, you know, uh, Grinlogan, Fantastic anime. Shoutouts to Ruben for turning me on to it. Oh my god, the mechs. I have to say, anime and mechs just go hand in hand. And you know, throw them into Godzilla, it makes total sense. Throw them into this. The, the vultures look so sick. They were so cool. You know, I'd totally pilot one of those. If I can get my license at that, I don't know if ICBC or whatever it does, if, they, if that would be under them. But if they did that, I'm there, day one. That'd be super fun. 
So these vultures, there's three of them, they're flying around and they just, they're sick and sweet and sleek. So they're going in hard and they're distracting Godzilla because Godzilla has a habit of being distracted. He is very, he has tunnel vision. He does not multitask whatsoever. You know, it's a bit of a downer for him because he's, I feel like he's just strolling around and like, oh, I'm getting poked from the side. What's going on over there? Oh, I'm getting poked from the right. What's going on over there? And he just goes for it. So that's what the vultures are doing. They're diverting him from <laughs> they're diverting him from Mecha Godzilla City all the way over to the trap zone. They get him into the trap zone. The bombs obviously free resource activate, drop him into the ground, and then they move he moves and follows the pathway into the trap zone and then they pour the nanomites in there locking his legs so he can't move and then the vultures are blasting out you know doing the same thing as mini zilla basically in the first part attacking his spine getting those uh, shock charge uh, um, spears back into his spine and getting him to overload and just basically explode um, obviously it's funny how I feel like the characters should have anticipated this. They thought it would be a one and done, but this Godzilla being so much bigger and being a Godzilla from 20,000 years ago, I feel like they should have anticipated evolutionary, evolution-wise, sorry, that he should have had another contingency plan for himself, you know, that the, this plan wouldn't go off, that it would go, they thought it would go off without a hitch. I feel like they should have been prepared for that not happening, that evolution takes its course, this creature that's built to survive and live and destroy would have a built-in contingency plan, which he did. I I was waiting for it. He, everyone's just like, yeah, we did it. And Godzilla's like, nope, fuck you guys. I'm not dead. And so, again, he just, he starts melting though. And that was cool to see OG Zilla just go completely into... I just felt like it was rampage mode, like rage mode. Oh, like he was just, he was turning badass. He wasn't moving, but he just looked badass. He was getting red and stuff like that. And so this is again in the storyline where things got crazy. Metfist is just walking out there and he's just looking. And then, uh, you know, he's gone for a few minutes. But then this is where it really comes down to as the base is melting, uh, Gu Galuga, he, uh, becomes, he lets the nanomites actually absorb him so he can become part of this logical server and system of um, uh, Mechagodzilla City so that he can join with the city and become more and be, essentially he is becoming a monster but he's becoming more of what he is to destroy another monster. Again, creating monsters to destroy monsters and it's, uh, for Hawa, it was, he didn't agree with that but he accepted that, that it was based on volunteers. The downside was when Galaga became um, nanomized, he uh, instigated the fact that, okay, you guys and your vultures, which there's three of them, uh, Yuki, Harwa, and the other dude, which I can't remember, who is the uh, same race as Galaga, um, if you guys conform into the nanites, then you can swoop down get past the temperature because Godzilla is now heating himself and melting everything around him as like a self-defense mechanism and he is healing at the same time. He's over a thousand degrees now in, uh, uh, in his temperature so he's really hot and everything is melting around him and that the vultures can't actually get to, uh, get to him to deal damage so basically their plan was uh, Galaga's plan was, okay, you basically have to cover yourself in nanomites, gives you a 10 second window to die bomb and suicide into um, Godzilla, and it'll, it should kill him. So, obviously this is where it gets really intense. The people in the city with Galaga, they don't like what's going on. Galaga's saying, turn in the nanites, turn in the nanites. People are like, no freaking way, we ain't doing that. So they're running away, and he calls them, wow, you guys are as weak as I thought or a subspecies or a weak species or something like that. Um, they ran away. They ran outside. They're sweating like crazy. You're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then good old Metfist, you know, he walks into the bar. He puts his hand over everyone. And he's like, oh, come on, guys. I got you. So he <laughs> leads them, uh, tells them where to go. They go to the little cave where they just chill out for a little bit. And uh, that's all good. So now 
as Galaga sees that that has happened, he activates and tells the plant, this plant obviously, that they need to sacrifice themselves and turn into nanomites uh, to kill Godzilla. He triggers a remote activation, and inside the vultures, um, the pilots start turning into nanites, and Yuki just goes crazy, batshit crazy. She's freaking out. She didn't want this, and then Harawa is like, it's supposed to be volunteers, Galaga. Galaga's like, Ugh. And then the other dude is Galaga's uh, people. He's like, hurts at first, just roll with it, it's cool. And uh, Yuki's like, I don't want this. And Howard's like, ugh. And so it just escalates from there. And then Yuki, again, she's like gonna eject herself. And Galaga's like, don't eject yourself. And so Yuki doesn't eject herself. <laughs> and then she's still in there and she's suffering and she's going through shit. And then Harua dive bombs, the other Galaga dude, or friend or whatever, is like, once we become nanites, we'll be brothers. I'll meet you at the spot. And he flies up to go and uh, prepare himself to take down Godzilla. Harawa is just going down, though, and saving Yuki, because I think the relationship they had going for them, I guess I missed it, but they, they made out earlier in this, because he got love going on, and I think, you know, that was great. As Yuki's development goes, I, I love how her character progressed forward based on the drive and the passion that Harawa had you know, in his memories of Earth before they left the planet. Um, and I, I think that was a great thing that brought them together as a couple. So it was very sad to see her suffering, going through this pain, and the, the that is what pulled Harawa out of, you know, his mindset of just being obsessed with destroying Godzilla. And even throughout this part, he was posed with uh, these situations and asked these questions to himself too. You could tell he was struggling, like, do these other people deserve this? Am I putting these people in the right position because of my obsession? And I think as a leader, when you question what you're doing as a leader, that makes you a step ahead of the curb in any other leadership role, you know? Your ability to identify yourself and your actions and how it affects others and the weight of that on your shoulders is what makes a leader very powerful, very wise, and someone that you want to follow. And that is what Harawa delivered in this part, especially for the people he was leading. You know, there was conflict and people like, why do you want to kill Godzilla? We just got destroyed by him. But at the end, um, it wasn't him ruling with fear or leading with fear, but his ability to genuinely believe that they could do it, st yet struggling, you know, to learn, like, how are we going to do it? Do I have to compromise this or that? But at the end, he chooses to save uh, Yuki, and he realizes what Metfist has been saying this whole time. Obviously, Metfist has started talking on the intercom, and he's just, you know, Metfist is there, and he's like, Haru, I've been trying to raise you on the radio. Don't give in to this, you know, it's, don't believe what Galuga is saying. Don't compromise your humanity, and da 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 <laughs> Metfist is always there, you know. And uh, he just, he throws down these facts and it makes, uh, it makes Hara realize and Harawa, you know, he saves Yuki holding her, because uh, her mech, her vulture was falling as she tried to eject, so she wasn't doing good. But Harawa grabbed onto her vulture with his vulture and he flew down and uh, Metfis told him like, okay, you have to destroy Galaga in the main lab. Uh, unfortunately, it means Godzilla lives because Godzilla is still stationary trying to recuperate. Excuse me, but if he kills Galaga, or at least takes down the lab area, it'll prevent the spread of the nanomites from um, Mecha Godzilla City. Which Metfist does also state that if they destroy Godzilla, it's just replacing one monster with another, and that the nanomites will spread and consume the planet, and there will be no stopping it then. Um, it's just it. it I what I, I wasn't expecting them to really dive at this so powerfully, but I really liked how much stress it put on Harawa's character and just how he developed and realized that his confrontation with Galaga, he, he just, he full on was able to believe that, you know what, no, as a human being, you should never have to compromise yourself as a human to become something more or to achieve better. As Galaga is saying, you know, when you, uh, the day you decided to kill Godzilla, you strive to basically just get rid of your humanity and become something even more powerful and to destroy it. And I love that he stands against that now and doesn't believe it because 
I do believe that humans can do amazing, incredibly powerful things, and you don't need to compromise your humanity or your integrity. I think it's the fact that we can do the unimaginable and the unbelievable and the most incredible things in this universe, that is what makes us human, doing these incredible things. And how he realizes that, you know, what is the, there is no worth to winning this fight if we don't win it as humans. And they just, they clashed at that. And I love that line being delirious. It's probably my favorite line throughout this, uh, the part two. So they clash, but in the end, Harua blows up that control room and Godzilla basically frees up and starts going crazy, blowing shit up. Uh, he flies away, but at the same time, Galaga's friend who's in the other vulture comes in and he doesn't do so good, I guess, because when the control room gets blown up, it affects the nanites and shuts them down. So he started already turning into nanites and he dies. He, yeah, he, he's dead. So Yuki, unfortunately, she, she got really hit hard with the nanites. So Harua got her off to the side on this little platform, saved him, and, or saved her. Um, but when he got out of his, his vulture and ran to her, I couldn't tell if it was tears or if it was uh, nanites coming out of her eye. I hope it was tears. The nanites would be kind of gross, but she unfortunately, I'm assuming, yeah, I guess I have a little bit of a problem with cliffhangers in the podcast, but I, this ended on a cliffhanger for me because like, it couldn't tell if she died or not. Haura just was screaming like, ah, and Godzilla was just blowing shit up. Uh, you still got the humans up in uh, their orbital station around the earth. And that pretty much cuts to a close. It cut that with Hiro screaming and Yuki just laying there. And it just, I felt unsatisfied because I wanted to know more. But then I skipped past the credits and I got to the end credits scene. And, you know, that that made me feel satisfied, I should say. So we obviously have a part three coming. There was an earlier part in part two where uh, Metfist was talking to uh, Haru, and Haru was like, your planet was destroyed by monsters, wasn't it? And uh, Metfist was like, yes, it was. You know, we believe in the power of words. Again, a great line. You know, when we say a word, we believe it actually has meaning behind it to cause events to happen. And it just, it has power behind it. And he starts going in and talking about how, you know, I feel like I will tell you the name of the monster, even though we don't like to say his name, but I'll tell you so that you can use it as a drive to defeat Godzilla when you're facing him down. And I was, I was so, I was waiting and waiting and waiting because I really wanted to know what monster he was going to name drop. And he says, this monster just puts Godzilla to shame. He is much more feared, you know, afraid, be afraid of him. And, you know, he leans in the whisper. But you don't get to hear the name. <laughs> like, oh, don't do this to me. So, you know, thankfully the end credits scene, we get to know that name. It was very satisfying for me. It, uh, he leans in and he whispers, uh, Ghidorah. I think that's sick. I can't wait for part three because now I, it's guaranteed Ghidorah's gonna come in there. I'm very confident we're gonna get some Mothra stuff. Um, I feel like Mechagodzilla is definitely written out now. Um, I really thought he was going to say Space Godzilla, but I'm, I'm glad he didn't. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it's going to be cool to see uh, Ghidorah brought in now, and just, I want to see some more of the Godzilla monsters. It I, I was very surprised that we didn't get that in this part, too. It was just Godzilla-oriented, but I guess, you know, it makes sense. OG Godzilla was the main problem here, so, you know, it. even though this did have many, many similarities to part one, I feel like part three is going to deliver a lot more of a fresh kind of vibe and feeling. Um, I feel like this part two was really, really good. And I really hope many of you do give it a shot and do give it a chance. I know like, I'm not sure really what other reviewers are saying about uh, Godzilla right now with this, but I think personally it's a great two, part, uh, two parts right now. And I'm super excited for part three. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a, another watch uh, watch through of part one and part two just so I get the two back to back because it's a, it's an awesome story. I love the story of Earth being abandoned, coming back. Godzilla just runs rampant and just humanity on the edge and the brink with another like couple alien races working with them. I think it's super cool. So uh, yeah, I would say definitely check it out. And uh, huge shout outs to uh, Kirkland. 
you know, I feel like you're a huge supporter of the the Godzilla anime cast I do, so shout-outs to you, and, you know, shout-outs to all the other podcast members. Hopefully, you know, Judge Jaguar, hopefully you make an appearance in uh, in these this anime. That would be, that would be sick. Just, just for, just for Dylan. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, like I said at the beginning of the cast, you know, tons of Comic-Con stuff happening. If you're watching this over the Comic-Con weekend, be sure to check it out. Uh, yeah, and I think that wraps up my Godzilla Part 2 review. So, you know, until next time, uh, I'll, you got, when that Godzilla Part 3 drops, I'll be there and I will be, I'll, I'll be there. Yeah. So, until next time, we'll see you in the search bar. Have a wonderful weekend, day, wherever you are, night. Have a good one.